back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm so excited because I'm on vacation. It's very exciting. I almost never stay home for vacation because I busy myself and I end up getting like more stressed out by staying home. Obviously I spend less money, but I don't know about that because I do a lot of fabric shopping online when I'm at home on vacation. <laughs> So anyways, um, so today I'm on vacation and I wanted to share with you guys my plans for my vacation. So it's kind of like a so-cation, but I have mixed in some other hobbies and things that I want to get done and that I want to do. And it'll just kind of let you guys know a little bit uh, more about me and like some other sides of me that I don't always talk about. So you'll get to see other things that I'm interested in. And if you guys are also interested in these other things, let me know because then we can talk about more stuff. Um, but anywho, in case you haven't noticed, the sewing room's a lot brighter and it's a lot more organized. And I have a video of that coming very soon of how I cleaned up my fabric and how I organized it. And then I also have another video coming later about a um, load of fabric I got from Paris but I filmed it in my old room, <laughs> so I wanted to take a break from fabric hauls for now, so I'm gonna save that one for later, but today, let's get started. So first, I'm gonna talk about this fabric from Measure Fabrics. It is gorgeous. I talked about it in my last Measure Fabric video um, when I did the fabric haul, and I had a lot of plans for what I was gonna do with it. Um, but I think I finally decided on what I want to make and it's actually not something I mentioned in the fabric haul video, <laughs> but it's awesome and I'm really excited and, um, I am going to make it this week. So, um, to remind you guys, it's the floral bouquet clusters on crinkle chiffon. I washed it and I hung it dry and it turned out really beautifully. Um, it's for Measure Fabrics, and it's two um, yards, and it's about 42 to 45 inches wide. Um, I think it just kind of depends on how much you like kind of stretch it out because it's a crinkle chiffon, but on my uh, measuring table, it's about between 42 to 45 wide. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm able to make this, but I'm thinking it's a possibility. Um, I was thinking either the um, Lottie blouse, which I, th I might have mentioned in my last video, or I was thinking that a Wilder gown would be really cool, but I wouldn't include the last tier. I would just make this tier be the last one, which is the um, just adding the one tier underneath the bodice. Um, and so then it would be like more of a short dress, kind of a shirt. Um, and I was thinking that would be awesome to transition into spring and I would wear like some skinny jeans most likely under it, um, a little hat, like a little, I have a lot of crochet when I used to crochet, a lot of crochet, like little, um, berets, um, or hats. Um, so I was thinking of wearing one of those and yeah. So I'm really excited. Um, I think it'll be really good. And the thing part I'm most excited about is for the tie. I like to use the contrast. I think in my last one, I also did a contrast tie. I was thinking black would be really cool um, to like a black tie around the neck would be really cool. But I'm not a huge fan of black fabric. And so um, it just does nothing for me. So unfortunately I don't have any black fabric. Um, and, uh, Maria is going to laugh when she sees this because we had a conversation about how like she, uh, doesn't particularly love black fabric either. So, <laughs> so here's a dark gray, um, that is actually a silk. So it's going to have a beautiful drape. It's going to go really well with this. I don't have too much of it. So it's, it's, I bought it a long time ago. So, um, it probably was only going to be like an Ogden cami or like a really simple, um, tea, uh, one day and I probably won't need that much. So if I take a little bit for a tie, it won't be that big a deal. Um, and it's 45 inches wide. So that's my plan for that. And I cannot wait to make it. I think it'll be really romantic, really flowy, beautiful. It'll definitely be 
see-through, so I'll have to wear a camisole underneath, but that's fine. That's no big deal. All right, next, I did a promenade fabrics haul recently, and I showed you guys this beautiful fabric, and I have literally been hoarding it like crazy, and it, it's so nice. Um, anyways, so I'm excited to make something with it. I have decided what I'm gonna make, but it was a really tough decision, and um, I'm still not 100% sure, but I'm fairly certain um, that I'm gonna make a Reina shirt by Pauline Alice um, Patterns. It's an older pattern. I just bought it. I've been eyeing it for the longest time. But it's basically a button down shirt, but the buttons don't start till about here. Um, or it has like a v-neck shape, buttons start here, and it has the cutest little like covered buttons. So I, I don't know if I'll cover these buttons or if I just get like a coordinating color. Um, and then it has a tie. I guess I'm obsessed with ties lately. But I was thinking that I would use this for the tie. Now I know I had mentioned making a dress out of this. I mean, I had some pretty good ideas, but if I'm being per perfectly honest, I'm really scared to work with this fabric. And so actually a button down shirt is not as intimidating for me as like coordinating like a silk lined dress. So yeah, and I'll most likely do French seams because that'll just make it 10 times nicer. Um, this kind of reminds me of Versace and they have really beautiful like um, button down shirts out of their fabric that reminds me of this. And um, it also I think would make a really cool like Carolyn pajamas top like just wearing it as a shirt. So I might change my mind to do that. I'm so indecisive you guys but I think it's going to be at least one of those two things. I'm leaning towards the Raina shirt since I specifically bought it for this. <laughs> And I really want to incorporate the edge as a tie. And so I really wanted to find something with like a tie or like a component that I could contrast um, the top with um, using that edge. That is super cool. So yeah, so that is a make from the other fabric haul that I have done recently. So now I've got two makes coming up from the fabric hauls that I filmed recently, which is kind of cool. You guys can see when I got the fabric and then actually have it become something because you know, half the fabric I get is just hoarded until I find something to do with it. Um, but I'm trying to be better about it and I feel like making these videos is keeping me accountable and helping me be like, wait, I talked about that, I should make something out of it. And so I was like, okay, fine, I'll make something out of my hoarded fabric. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Um, next we're going to talk about a make that I'm almost done with and I'm so excited about and I just have to put on the buttons, but you know, we have so many unfinished projects in our lives that just need buttons or just need hemming or I mean, tell me that you guys can relate. <laughs> Anyways, I'm making this top. I'm going to have a full YouTube video about it, video about it because you can make so many things with just one pattern. Um, and I will talk about that in another video because I have a lot of good ideas, but I've already made this one, this view out of this beautiful Liberty fabric I got in London when I was there, um, last year and I still have threads everywhere. Sorry. All I need are the buttons on the sleeve and on the front, but it's turning out beautifully. So that is for sure what's gonna happen this week because, you know, I have to do a lot of unfinished projects and this is one of them. Um, and I uh, can't wait to try this on and show it to you guys and take pictures and uh, put it on Instagram. But I'll also have a YouTube video. And I also have mended a lot of projects that my kids have been wanting me to mend. Like my daughter had a stuffed animal that had a hole in it for the longest time and I finally mended it, woo! -hoo! So, moving on. Speaking of mending, my hubby put these on my table and I was like, yes, can I help you? <laughs> and he put them on my table and he's like, uh, can you fix these? So 
These are jeans from Urban Outfitters and he loves them. He loves the fit. There's a hole here, a hole here, big old hole here. And this one kind of has another little buddy down here. So, oh, and there's some in the back. So, this is gonna be started on this week. I have no idea when it's gonna get done. I think it's gonna be kind of a slow, sew slow sewing type of project um, because sometimes you just need things to slow you down, you know? Um, and so, I've been having this book for a while called Mending Matters um, and it's super cool. I have read a lot of it already um, and looked at all of uh, what you can do with mending and patches and things like that. Now my hubby doesn't want this, <laughs> but I think I might do something in between, just a plain patch that you can barely see and this. So I ordered some Sashiko thread and needles because that's the technique that's in here. And I think I'm gonna be able to get away with doing a patch that um, will be interesting, but not like crazy, you know, in your face bright like this, which he wouldn't like. I would like it, but he wouldn't like it. So the thing I've read so far in the book is that she recommends cutting away all the fraying and putting a patch behind. And so I'm not sure about that. I, I will do it because that's what she recommends, but then it's gonna, like the fabric behind is gonna, there's gonna be so much attention to the fabric behind it. And I don't have black denim. And of course I'm trying to mend with what I have. Um, so I'm hoping that it's gonna look okay. This is what I have as like a remnant. Um, which is actually kind of a lot, and it's more than enough for a patch. I mean, you don't need that much, and I could easily buy black denim, but I thought it'd be cool to have like a little bit of a different color. So we'll see if it passes the husband test. That is something different and new that I never really talked about, and I wanted to share it with y'all because it's really cool to mend your clothes. I think it kind of makes it, if it's ready to wear, like you form like a new relationship with it, and then it's like, you love it that much more because it's a little bit me made, but then it's also a little bit ready to wear. And so it just kind of helps tra transform the clothes that you have that you haven't made into something really cool. So I like it. I think it's cool. We'll see how it goes. All right, next I want to talk about a book. So I really take the time to read books. Um, it's like super rare. But I figured I would read a couple of pages at a time of this book. It's called The Painted Girls. I just started it, so I'm not, this is not like a book review. <laughs> um, but the reason I'm reading it and the reason I was interested in it is because it's like a historical fiction. Um, and so it's basically about a uh, time in Paris and the Opera House and like Degas and like all of that time period. And I think, don't quote me on this, I think it's supposed to be kind of centered around the type of girl that would have been dancing in the opera house and the girl that um, Edgar Degas made a statue of. He has a um, statue in Musée Orsay in Paris and it's, I think it's called, um, dancer aged 14 or something like that. Um, and the statue is really like, when you look at it, it says a lot about like what the girls were going through and kind of what they look like. And it was rather pitiful actually. <laughs> so it really kind of, I stared at it for the longest time. Like it was so moving. And then when I found out about this book, um, just totally randomly, like separately, I thought that it was really cool that it was kind of related to that. So that's why I wanted to read it. Plus I used to dance. Not a lot of people know that, but I did ballet, jazz, contemporary, everything for like so many years, probably until I was about 20. So dancing's in my blood. So yeah, anyway, it's by Kathy Marie Buchanan. So we'll see how much of that I get read. 
Last but not least, when I'm watching, whoa, uh -oh, there went a knitting needle. <laughs> when I'm watching, um, this can be dangerous, you know, TV at night with the hubby and the kids. We've been watching movies. Um, I pick this up, my knitting project. So I'm really proud of myself because this is a kit. It's from We Are Knitters. It's called the Sabrina Sweater. This is the front. It's an intermediate kit and I've never done intermediate before. I've only done like super beginner scarves and things like that. And I think it's intermediate because these little bubbles, but they're actually really easy to do. Like once you learn it one time, it's super easy. Um, this is the front, it's cotton. So it'll be good for spring and summer. Um, and it's just the best feeling yarn, it's so nice. Um, so this is the front, the back. <laughs> so it's good I finish the front, but then I have to repeat the exact same thing to do the back. So I'm like, oh, I have to do another one. Um, but anyways, I do another one and then I have to do a sleeve and then another sleeve and then you stitch them all together. But this is kind of the picture off the package, which looks strange, I know, but that's the picture. Um, and it's just super cute. I love it. And it comes off the shoulder a little bit and just gorgeous. So, um, I cannot wait to finish it. And yeah, I pretty much picked the same color as the picture because it was like the perfect color. <laughs> I tried to be different, but I was like, nope, I'm doing that color. Um, so I'm really excited to do it. And I'm so proud of myself for finishing the entire front. Um, and I've never knitted with needles this tiny. I've always done the chunky yarn and knitters are probably laughing at me because this is not even tiny. <laughs> it's like medium size. Um, like socks and everything require the really tiny yarns, but um, I mean needles, but it's five, they're five millimeter needles. So anyways, this came with the kit. So I am getting better and better at knitting. Um, so yeah, and I actually, I think I'm going to take time to talk about knitting in a YouTube video at some point, just because it's such a big part of my life. Um, and I don't really post about it on Instagram, mostly because it takes forever to knit like one thing <laughs> for me. So if I only posted about that, then I would post like once a month. Um, but yeah, so I, I love it though. It really is a different kind of creativity and it's um, really relaxing and it helps me feel like I'm getting something done when I'm just sitting around watching TV because like if I want to watch movies with the kids like it's a great activity to do as a family but a part of me sometimes when I'm like really busy gets anxious that I'm not like getting something done and so it, it almost like calms me down to just sit there and knit and hang out with the kids and like it's just a good feeling I love it and you can take it anywhere so that's enough about knitting I'm gonna have a YouTube video about that later but anyway I hope you enjoyed what I talked about for what I'm doing on vacation I thought it would be a really cool video because um you could know what I'm actually planning on doing this week um on top of you know everything else that I have plans for like um, taking the kids to ballet and all sorts of stuff you know just helping them out more as a parent <laughs> um, anyway so thank you so much for watching um, if you like this video subscribe below and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I have another video um, if you have any questions or you just want to say hi leave a comment below and I'll comment back um, and that's it Thank you so much for watching. Bye. That sounds so weird. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I said that weird. YouTube channel. YouTube channel. YouTube. Oh.